This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Nobody ever slows down. They, they kind of just kind of shake us off. New tonight, a Central Indiana mother spent part of her week explaining to her kids why someone ran over their family cat. Now, she says speeding drivers are to blame. RTV6's Graham Hunter spoke to that mother in Greenwood about why she's afraid the next accident will be much worse. My son was playing basketball. It went out in the road. Vanessa Kinchola watched it happen. Car was speeding so fast he couldn't stop. So he ended up hitting the, the ball. And here's the tire mark. Canchola is afraid those tire marks could foreshadow something worse. My fear is if my kid would have went out after that ball, it would have been my kid, not the ball. The speed limit on Briarstone Drive where she lives and her kids play is 25 miles an hour. They go more, maybe about 35, 40, maybe even more than that. They rev their engines from down the road and speed out. This week, Canchola says a speeding driver did end a life. Recently, our cat was hit by a speeding vehicle also, and he passed. So we're, we're still dealing with that too. My kids are devastated. Oreo would have turned two next week. The driver was speeding so fast, he didn't even stop to see what he hit. He just kept going. Canchola wants change in her neighborhood. I've asked about speed bumps. Anyone living in Greenwood can go to the city's website and use the Citizen Connect tool to ask the city's engineering department for a traffic impact analysis. We've asked for signs like watch kids are at play, but we haven't got anything yet. For speeding traffic, you can tell Greenwood Police, which a city spokesman says will set up monitors to assess the issue issue and potentially add patrols. Kinchola says she made that request as well. I want everybody to be aware that, hey, let's just slow down and do less than 25, I think. Reporting in Greenwood, Graham Hunter, RTV6. Graham, thank you. And a Greenwood city spokesperson says they have traffic studies ongoing throughout the city with a big focus on the downtown area and says they read every request citizens make. If you see a safety issue in your neighborhood and need help getting results, contact us at workingforyou at rtv6.com. New tonight, a flight from Indianapolis to Paris has been diverted after a witness says a passenger started shouting and attacked members of the crew. The Delta flight from Indianapolis International Airport turned around and landed in Detroit. You can see the flight path here. We reached out to Delta for information. The airline confirms the flight was diverted to remove an unruly passenger. And Kevin's daughter was actually on that plane. So Kevin, what's she telling you tonight? Well, it left Indy about 6.15. It was east of Buffalo and they thought a passenger was having a panic attack. He got up and he was really boisterous and then he started throwing some punches, trying to bite and he ended up being subdued, put in handcuffs and a couple of people holding him down until they went all the way back to Detroit. That's still a scary situation. Yeah, absolutely. So it was uh, something to get everybody's attention and they're delayed now, obviously, till tomorrow morning. Right. For us, we stare at the thermometer. It is calm, clear and quite cool. Across central Indiana, the wind today was gusting almost to 50 miles per hour. Now that it's calmed down and we have clear skies. It's 47 in Peru, 49 in Lafayette, 53 in Indianapolis. You realize a record temperature is 45 degrees. There's the calm wind. During the day tomorrow, the wind will be out of the southwest. That will help us warm up rather quickly from these cool temperatures in the morning. Within two degrees of that record that was set in 1955, our expected temperature at 47. As we go through the morning hours, lots of sunshine to get your Friday started. And with after Afternoon clouds starting to show up. We're still expecting dry conditions. We'll talk about how that changes, though, as we head into the weekend coming up. If you were impacted by the storms and tornadoes that swept through central Indiana on Memorial Day, federal help is available. You can apply for low-interest disaster loans to help with cleanup and repair. The United States Small Business Administration is making the loans available for people in Madison, Delaware, Grant, Hancock, Tipton, and Henry Counties. For more information on the assistance available and how to apply, go to the RTV6 app and click on this story. It's a problem many of us encounter every day potholes, but people in a neighborhood on the south side of Indianapolis are facing extra frustration because they cannot even report the issue to the city. People who live in Green Lay Acres near South, Key, near South Keystone and East Hanna say the mayor's action center system will not let them report potholes. They keep saying this is not their responsibility. Every, every one of these residents have, have called the mayor's action center, but they can't even log the complaint because it, their system doesn't allow them to log the complaint. Several times I was told we don't live on a city street. Well, if I don't live on a city street, why do I pay city taxes and why do they pick up our trash? 
Now, RTV6 looked into the issue for those homeowners when trying to report the potholes using the Request Indy app. An error says the street is private and to contact the complex management associate or developer to request service. But there's no homeowners association anymore and has not been for years. After we took that information to city officials, they said crews would fix the potholes. But a few hours later, said they legally cannot because state laws do not allow them to use road funding dollars on private property. RTV6 will continue to try and find a resolution for those residents. If you live in Fishers or the surrounding area, a warning. Police are investigating break-ins at several apartments. The complexes are Sunblessed, Metropolitan of Fishers, Sand Creek Woods, Lantern Woods, and Reveal on Cumberland. They are all located between 106th Street and 116th Street. Police say the crimes share similarities, but they are still working to figure out if they are 100% connected. We told you earlier this week in the cases at Reveal on Cumberland, the suspects got into the apartment apartments by kicking in the front doors. We also want to alert you to a string of crimes in Morgan County. Thieves are targeting cars at Pioneer Park in Mooresville. Jessica Catterhenry is one of the victims. Someone busted the window of her van and stole several items on Tuesday. Jessica says she'll be more careful in the future. I never leave my purse visible or in the vehicle anyways. And that day I just jumped out in a hurry, left it sitting there like an idiot and it happened. So. I won't do that again. Signs are posted in the park telling visitors not to leave valuables in vehicles. The park is installing a new surveillance system, but it was not operating on Tuesday. Brownsburg is the latest town to abruptly lose a Scotty's Brew House. The location on Northfield Drive near Green Street shut down suddenly yesterday. A statement from the company says the independent owner of the restaurant made the decision to close. The company says it will work to find other jobs for the employees impacted by the closing. Now this is at least the seventh Scotties to shut down over the last year. The other locations were on Southport Road, 96th Street, and downtown Indianapolis, Carmel, Noblesville, and Muncie. Three wise men in Broad Ripple, which was also owned by the same company, also closed suddenly this week. A $100 million expansion is coming to the Butler University campus. It's the university's largest single investment in school history. The money will be used to renovate and expand Butler's science facilities. The project includes new high-tech classes classrooms and labs that mimic labs at top research companies. The first two phases of construction are set to start soon and will take an estimated 18 months to complete. IMPD's deputy chief will take on a new job with a new department next month. Chris Bailey will take over as chief of the Asheville, North Carolina Police Department on July 29th. Bailey is known for being outspoken against violence, often talking to reporters at crime scenes. He's also a major advocate of community policing. He has been with Metro Police for 20 years. And today, neighbors on the southwest side enjoyed food, entertainment, giveaways, and more, courtesy of Metro Police. IMPD's Southwest District hosted its Community Day on King Avenue near Michigan Street. The event is aimed at helping build relationships between police and the community. Keona Johnson attends every year. I think it's a great way for the police and the community to, you know, kind of come together because you hear so many negative things about the police. So I think this is a good way for people to get engaged with the police and to see them in a different side. Each IMPD district hosts its own community day event. A couple of beloved annual events are going on this weekend in Indianapolis. We start on the southeast side where the Italian Street Festival continues tomorrow and Saturday. It runs from 5 to 11 each day at Holy Rosary Catholic Church near East and Stephen Streets. You can enjoy more than 25 different pastas, Italian meats, desserts, and more. That sounds great. Admission is free. Food tickets are a dollar each. And a reminder, the Indianapolis Zoo will be closed tomorrow so the staff can prepare for Zubilation. Zubilation is the state's largest black tie fundraiser. Last year, it raised $2.5 million for the care and feeding of the zoo's animals and plants and programs. This year's theme is Night in the Jungle, and the event is sold out. The zoo will resume normal operations Saturday at 9 a.m. I'll have a detailed forecast for that, but low humidity and dry conditions, that's key. Different story over the weekend. Here comes the rain. This is Saturday morning. I'll finish your weekend timeline coming up. Can you provide a temporary home for a dog who suffered horrible abuse? The Shelby County Animal Shelter is asking for the public's help. Plus. It was a long journey. Um, blood, sweat, and tears, actually. <laughs> a lot of tears. <laughs> worth the wait. A woman who just earned her high school diploma shares advice for anyone thinking about going back to school. You're watching RTV6 News at 11. Your budget stretches further at Mattress Firm. This is RTV6 News at 11. Working for you. 
dog that suffered serious burns and other abuse needs a new temporary home. Justice was found in November with chemical burns on his face and back and cuts on his tongue. The shelter began accepting adoption applications for him last month. Today, the shelter posted they are in need of an emergency foster for Justice as soon as possible. He would need to be the only dog in the home. If you could help, contact the shelter at 317-392-5127. Oscar-winning actor Cuba Gooding Jr. is free tonight after spending six hours in police custody. ABC's Maggie Ruley reports the 51-year-old pleaded not guilty to charges related to accusations that he groped a woman in a nightclub. Oscar winner Cuba Gooding Jr. arrested and in handcuffs. What's your message, Cuba? The actor surrendering to the New York Police Department Thursday afternoon after allegations surfaced accusing him of forcibly touching a woman at a nightclub in New York City. Gooding Jr. denies all allegations. I think it's extremely unfortunate that Mr. Gooding has to go through this process. The police are focusing on video circulating online. It shows the Bronx native partying with friends at a bar and taking photos with fans. A 29-year-old woman told police it was at that club that Gooding Jr. grabbed her breast while intoxicated on Sunday night. I have extensively with my staff reviewed the video of almost two hours, which reflects the entire uh, event for which we're here today. Mr. Gooding has not acted inappropriately in any shape or form. Nothing in the video could even be considered ambiguous. And I frankly am shocked and horrified that this case is being prosecuted. His lawyer claims the woman was pursuing the actor and was upset when she didn't get the attention she was looking for. He says Gooding Jr. trusts the judicial process and has complete confidence that he will be fully exonerated. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, New York. Today, the White House announced new efforts to help people find jobs after serving time in prison. Hiring Hoosiers is putting a spotlight on the Second Chance Hiring program tonight. It includes a new ready-to-work initiative to connect employers directly with former prisoners. The Department of Labor is awarding more than $2 million to states that support companies, to support companies rather that hire workers with criminal backgrounds. And the Department of Education is expanding an initiative that allows people in prison to receive Pell Grants to better prepare themselves for the work Workforce. Kim Kardashian West spoke at the announcement. She's become an advocate for prison reform. I think the ultimate goal is everyone wants the community to be safe and the more opportunity we have and that they have and the support that we help give them, the safer everyone will be and the recidivism rate will be um, continue to just get lower. Tomorrow we will find out if the expansion of a company on the west side of Indianapolis means it will be hiring more Hoosiers. Now, Allison Transmission will make an economic development announcement and hold a groundbreaking at 10 o'clock Friday morning. The company on 10th Street manufactures fully automatic transmissions for commercial vehicles. Hundreds of new grads are ready to take the next step in their careers in education after earning their high school diplomas. More than 300 people from the Marion County campus of the Excel Center graduated today. The center is a program for people who dropped out of high school. Just being deprived of something is hard work, you know, but being successful is hard work too, so you just got to figure out which hard work you want to put in. The Excel Center is run by Goodwill of Central and Southern Indiana. A big part of Goodwill's mission is job and career oriented. There are programs to help single mothers find jobs and advance in their careers, training and employment for senior citizens and much more. Tonight we know when a very exclusive and elegant event will be held in Central Indiana. <laughs> September 14th, save the date. That's when this year's Diné en Blanc will be held in Indianapolis. Organizers shared the big reveal with our own Kevin Gregory at the Easley Winery, live on the news at 7 on RTV6. Diné en Blanc made its debut in Indy last year. Here's what you need to know if you're not familiar with the event. Well, I would describe it as a French pop-up picnic. It started about 31 years ago in Paris, France, and it has grown to more than 150 cities in about 65 countries right now. And we all get together all in white. We're taken to a secret location, and we all get off the bus, and we have dinner and dance, and we have just, it's a gorgeous affair. 
If you're interested in the event, you can register for the wait, uh, wait list rather at indianapolis.dineenblanc.com. And you went last year, Kevin. He was at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and it is quite the picture, you know, as you were everyone on the front straightaway there and all elegant in white. All white, like down yeah. the way. So let's hope on the 14th we have good weather, 14th Absolutely. of September. <laughs> it is cool right now. If you have to step outside before you drift off to sleep tonight, maybe the dog needs to go out one last time, you'll feel the chill. As we head into the weekend, our rain chances will come back up, and I think the most significant time for rain will be Saturday, Sunday, even into Monday. It's not just a one-day event periods of rain through that and we could see three inches or more of rain as a result. Let's talk about these current temperatures. 53 is the temperature in Indianapolis. The record 45 set back in 1955 with a string of 40s right up 231 from Greencastle, Bainbridge to Linden and Crawfordsville and Lafayette. That's the cool spot. As skies have cleared tonight, the wind has also calmed down. Boy, was it windy this afternoon. There's your magic number tomorrow morning. Wind will be light to start with, then pick up out of the southwest. Today it was a cool northwest wind. It felt more like April, but tomorrow stronger southwest wind and that will start to boost our temperatures and this will help as well. Plenty of sunshine. Temperature by noon at 69. It's 1250 in the morning right now. I don't think we've been on guys past 1 a.m. together. I can, start, <laughs> I can start talking very slowly if you'd like. I think that means no. <laughs> During the afternoon hours tomorrow, we'll see temperatures low to mid 70s. The increase in cloud cover will take place late in the day into the evening hours. Not expecting any rain though, zubilation, low humidity, partly cloudy skies and a light wind. Uh, the wind will be lighter, I should say. It'll still gust to 20 probably. Tomorrow night, overnight into Saturday morning, here comes the rain. First batch of rain is there when we wake up Saturday morning through 10 a.m. Still some ongoing rain. And I think Saturday night and Sunday rain is likely as well. The humidity comes up and weekend temperatures around 80 by Sunday. There are your periods of thunderstorms through the day Saturday. High temperatures a little below average. 7 a.m. widespread rain. There we are at 10 a.m. Some of this will be heavy. Still at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, a little break in western Indiana. And then more rain Saturday night and Sunday. What has been a very wet spring will turn into a very wet weekend as we move towards summer. All right, here's your seven-day forecast as we look at Father's Day. 81 degrees, rain and thunderstorms. Temperatures Monday still at 80 with more rain. And that daily chance continues Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday and Thursday. Father's Day coming up. Should I let Dave in on our goal? We're trying to go well past 1 a.m. Is Mike Tonight. Breen still up? talking? <laughs> yeah, that went on for a while, didn't it? Right. Kind, kind of, of, kind of, kind of went on for a while. It's all good, though. Well past 1 a.m., he says. Is that, is that our goal? No, no, well no, 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 it's no. And we can do it now. <laughs> Just go. Stick around. Please hurry. Call us. Be color six. Uh, <laughs> long time coming for Hamilton Southeastern getting past one of the toughest sectionals in the state. And Monday will play for their first baseball title. Worth the wait for these guys when the news at 11 or 12.52 a.m. Continue. Only on RTV6. And the reason we've gathered so late tonight, game six between the Raptors and Warriors. Key moment here, Clay Thompson on the drive goes down with a knee injury. All the feels certainly of when Kevin Durant went down the other night. Clay left the game, game high 30. Toronto, though, answered to the fourth. Kyle Lowry with a little fadeaway, put the Raptors up six, never trailed after that. Lowry tied the team high with 26, and Toronto puts away the reigning champs, won 14-110. Kawhi Leonard named the finals MVP. Guess what? Up next, the NBA draft a week from tonight. Good evening. It might be the longest weekend of the high school baseball season. Some eight teams waiting it out before the state championships next Monday and Tuesday at Victory Field. Well, then again, it's also all new for Hamilton Southeastern. They're in the 4A game Monday night, still standing in tonight's Sports Extra Spotlight. The bats are still swinging in Hamilton Southeastern. The gloves are still popping, and first-year head coach Jeremy Sassanella is getting ready for a trip to the state finals. It's been a good start. They've promised me at least one more year. You know, so, uh, I'm just uh, really, really proud to be here. It's odd because just getting past sectionals seemed like the real stretch, but wins over Westfield and Carmel helped send them on their way. We've been knocked out of sectionals early uh, the last two years, so coming through sectionals is 
uh, unbelievable in itself, and then winning regionals, winning semi-state, going to going to states, kind of unbelievable, honestly. The problem for opposing teams has been getting the royal treatment from their pitching staff. Tyler Schweitzer, Michael Dillon, and Cole Graverson are combined 18 and five this season. I don't think we've given up what four runs all tournament, and as long as you can put a bat on a ball, you're going to score runs. I think we go as our pitching goes, and I think our pitching has been amazing. So we've been amazing. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty. It's it, it helps to have good pitching. It yeah. does. Our pitching is very special. I mean, Michael and uh, Tyler Schweitzer, um, they're both on always. Big picture, it's one more week, one more practice, and one more game. But at least there isn't one more class. School itself has actually been out for a while now. Is it bizarre not, not having to go to school and still play baseball here? Yeah, but you're not going to hear me complain about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is weird. I mean, I had to text my boss at work that I had to take off. So, I mean, our girls' basketball team went to state this year and won, so they had hype going into it. And it's, yeah. it is a little different that we don't like, have this. Wait, game. where's ours here? Yeah. But it's a group that remains grounded just the way the head coach likes it. I think they understand the task at hand, though, too. You know, I challenged them when we got off on the bus on Saturday. I said, okay, guys, we're here. Yeah. And now w what do we do with it? Oh, just win, baby. They play third-ranked Columbus East in the 4A final game. Again, that's at Victory Field Monday and Tuesday, right after University and Washington Township play in that 5:30 game. Again, that one is Monday. Uh, Colts three-day minicamp wrapped up at the complex, and quarterback Kenny Moore, the second, nice little parting gift, a third-year pro getting a contract extension to the tune of four years and $34 million, highest paid slot corner in the NFL. Not bad for an undrafted free agent who set the club's playoff sacks record with three last winter. Hey, finally tonight, first and foremost, Pebble Beach opening around the 119th U.S. Open. Pebble looking fantastic. Perhaps the shot of the day, Louis Oosthuizen, second shot of the par 4, 11th, only 96 yards from the cup. Oosthuizen hits oh, seven yards past, why not? Sucks it right back in. 566, he trails the leader, Justin Rose, by just a shot. Some of the notables, Brooks Kepka, four shots back. Tiger is five back, round two tomorrow. The news at 11, or 1 a.m., continue. At Ross, yes for less. Welcome back. A Netflix documentary series about the bond between dogs and their owners is returning for a second season. And you could star in one of the episodes... You and your dog, of course. Share your story on social media. Tag Netflix Dogs and use the hashtag Netflix Dog Story. And you might hear from producers. And it looks like we're already on a roll, guys. <laughs> That's right. Look at that. There's Hanging with our pups. Bishop in the middle. Yep. Leo on the right. And Rory on the left. I love, I love Bishop's name because, Dave, he moves like the chess piece of Bishop. Yeah. He doesn't walk straight. He's kind of at an angle. Can you tell him we're all like a common yeah. theme? All the little dogs, good night. And he loves watching TV. 102 a.m.